you guys remember when I did this video, I got blasted by the Link Marines. And it was this video right here that said, you know what, where I decided, let me phrase that, I decided I was gonna put my money in band protocol. My money is in band protocol. I did not buy any Link whatsoever. And my reason for that is because of the Link Marines. The ignorance I was treated with, the bad mouthing, the trashing, the just the the garbage i just that was not for me that's just not my style i don't i just didn't like it but this video is not about that i want to talk about the fact and we have to go there okay we have to go there the price of band is going to pass the price of link me personally i see that happening it could happen tomorrow or the next day i'm fairly certain that's going to happen within the next 30 to 60 days i really feel that the band protocol is going to be a powerhouse. It's going to have some crazy returns. I'm not saying Chainlink hasn't. Chainlink is almost at 100, almost 100x since its ICO. It really is. It's done well as far as price goes. But I really feel that ban protocol is going to surpass Chainlink and get to a price level that Chainlink cannot get to. Now, this doesn't mean that Chainlink is not any is not as good as Band Protocol. I want you to understand that, okay? So save your ignorant ass comments if you want to be one of those Link Marine assholes. I'm not saying that Band Protocol is better than Chainlink as far as tech goes. What I'm going to say is the price of Band will pass Chainlink. Now, before we get too far into this video, make sure you smash make sure you smash the subscribe button, the like button, leave a comment, and share this video. You know YouTube hates this content, and the only way to smack them in the head and wake their asses up is to do everything I just asked. Let's come on, let's smack them in the head, wake them up, and make them realize that cryptocurrency content is here to stay. So the whole discussion about band and chain link, which one's better, you know, that's a really hard, it's a really hard pressed argument, okay, as far as the tech aspect goes. The thing about chain link is they're very loud and they're very proud. They accomplish something, you're gonna know about it. There's a partnership, you will know about it. Band protocol, on the other hand, is not like that. And it actually works against them and it causes a lot of people to draw false conclusions that are simply not true because they lack the information to know exactly what the hell is going on with band. That is actually a weakness with band. But I gotta tell you this, band protocol is one of those that is greatly underestimated because of that reason. But to try to really compare them tech-wise, they both have strengths, they both have weaknesses. Now, one thing about band protocol, actually, I'll say two things about band protocol. When I first mentioned it on this channel, it was like less than four dollars actually i think less than three dollars today it hit like twelve dollars and three cents i think it was so it is really really taken off it's doing very very well waves is one of the most recent partners band protocol is their focus is DeFi. they don't care about traditional stuff they don't care about normal crypto their focus is DeFi. one of the largest the largest DeFi wallets out there onboarded band first Okay, it's called Frontier Wallet. Frontier Wallet is going to change the entire realm of how we do DeFi. It's going to make DeFi where it's mobile, mobile and simple. And we all know that right now DeFi is where it is at. DeFi is where it's it's like the powerhouse of crypto right now. And Band Protocol has positioned itself very nicely in that realm. And that's not something a lot of people talk about. Now, Chainlink, on the other hand, Chainlink has accomplished a lot. Chainlink is all over the place. They are like with every crypto platform. They're even getting into more traditional, the more traditional side of the world. They are reaching their fingers everywhere. They are just like a palm, center palm, and they got fingers. That's what they're doing. Band protocol is like, hey, you know what? We're more like a rifle. We're gonna we're gonna put our sights on something, and that is where we're going. We're gonna knock you out. You know what I mean? So I mean, it's they're both different and how they handle things now chain links rival band protocol surged 65 percent overnight and three reasons why according to this article the first reason is one i already told you the DeFi boom and B DeFi is not slowing down it's going to keep growing the second is coinbase listing a band so coinbase pro to be more specific coinbase pro listing band and all of a sudden it goes through the roof Third is direct partnerships with DeFi platforms, which is something I've already mentioned. You see, again, Band is focused on one area, DeFi. And the fact is, if you look at the amount of liquidity in DeFi, and the fact that DeFi, that world, 
doesn't rely on retail money. DeFi focuses more on the institutional grade money. Okay, so it's 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 a, it's an ecosystem that is is very focused, has a lot of liquidity, and I tell you what, Band made a good decision by focusing on DeFi. Something else to think about is Chainlink is 25 times larger than Band. No doubt about it. Chainlink is a monster. As a matter of fact, the market cap of Chainlink is 4.4 billion. Band protocol is only a $217 million market cap. 24 hour volume, $2.4 billion for Chainlink, whereas Band only has $140 million in 24 hour volume. Chainlink is the clear monster. It is the clear giant. No doubt about it. They've had a longer run at it and they've done a good job diversifying themselves. But that gap and where the price is at right now with Band and with the amount of growth that Band has had, this means there is a lot of room for growth. Lots of it. Think about what one Band token will cost. If it were ever to achieve a 4.4 uh, $4 billion dollar market cap, can you imagine? Because you, you have to look at it like this: the circulating supply of band is 20 million uh, 494,000, and there's 350 million link out there. Okay, think about that. There's a. It, could you imagine? Now with band being in the DeFi world and focusing on the DeFi world only. It is not impossible for that to happen. Now, another scenario where Band will surpass Chainlink, if it's not because Band keeps pumping, keeps growing, or gets in more DeFi, the other scenario, in my opinion, is I think Band is going to is a much more stable asset right now because it is so small. It is only a quarter of the size of Chainlink. Therefore, it's a lot more stable, a lot more. There's a lot less money, a lot less traders. You get what I'm saying? Chainlink right now, according to Crypto Briefing, is scream sell despite new highs. And the thing that Crypto Briefing keeps bringing up and a few other people keep bringing up is the social engagement metrics for Chainlink are through the roof. Right now, I, 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 it'd be hard pressed to say that Tron or XRP um, can even compete with the level of marketing ability that Link has. There's no doubt that when it comes to marketing, uh, community growth hacking, that Link, Link is just is the monster. Hands down, without doubt. I don't think anyone in this space right now can compete with what they've done with marketing. But there is a downside to that. When you do heavy, heavy marketing, the community you build are the ones who are attracted to the fact that they saw you, heard of you, and speculate on the fact that, hey, you're spending this kind of much, this much money on marketing, it might be a good idea to invest, wait for a certain point, and then sell and get the hell out. And I suspect a link is going to run into that point with the amount of money and the amount, if you look at the metrics, their marketing metrics and how they're trending right now, okay? It is very clear that it's a possibility that at some point Link will exhaust itself. And then when it starts to dip, I suspect it's going to dip hard. So that possibility, so if that happens, which I really think will more likely happen, there's a good chance that Link will actually fall below the price of band. So there are plenty of arguments out there. There's a lot of metrics out there that say the price of band can beat the price of chain link. Again, I'm not saying that Chainlink is any less of a project than Band. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that Band has better technology than Chainlink. But the paths that they're both traveling are going to have different results. Chainlink being more diverse will give it one level of growth. Band being more focused on the DeFi sector right now is going to give it another. Okay, so I, I think it's exciting times. Now, let's move on to Ample Forth. A lot of you have been asking me about this. I was one of the first people to promote Ample Forth last summer. I find it one of the coolest things out there. It's basically an experiment right now, to be completely honest with you. But the thing about Ample Forth, the beauty about Ample Forth is rebasing. So rebasing means at the end of every 24 hours, right, the supply could change. It could increase or it can decrease depending on what the price of Ample is. Their target rate is a dollar and one cents, okay, as far as Ample goes. So 
If the Oracle, if the price of Ample were to close at the end of that 24 hours at over a dollar sixty, a dollar and six cents, they're going to increase the supply. If the price of Ample were to close between a dollar and six cents and ninety six cents, nothing happens. There's no rebase. But if the price of Ample closes at the end of the 24 hours at less than ninety six cents, then the supply decreases. And that's for everyone. Everyone undergoes the same change, whether you're increasing or decreasing. So, I mean, if you hold one percent of the supply, right, you will always hold one percent no matter if it increases or it decreases because it does so proportionally. Now, but in the bottom of this video, I'm going to link the Ample Fourth Red Book that shows you and explains to you how to trade with this. So it's it sounds complicated. It sound it's very, very different. For me, okay, Ample Fourth is going to be a mechanism that's going to be incorporated into DeFi that's gonna take this thing like through it's gonna it's gonna make it insane. It's gonna take it through the freaking roof, in my opinion. Right now, team members, if you're wondering what's happening to the, the, the price of Ample, team members have gotten their token, and those tokens right now are flooding the market. Nothing you can do about it. Not to mention, a lot of people bought into Ample as it was pumping. Let me show you. If you look at the last three months, I mean, Ample has really, really taken off, scratching the $4 marks. I mean, it's, it's really done. Imagine rebate. So at the rebasing at $4 meant you were making some crazy money. Uh, one thing to look at, though, is when Ample goes above one dollar, uh, hits that 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 positive rebase. You're gaining ten percent every day. Yes, you lose about three, I think three to seven percent right now, depending on how low it actually goes, right? But when it gets above a dollar, it's compounding interest every day. It's it's insane. It's insane how it works. It's one of the things I really I really enjoy Ample. I actually see Ample doing very well. The reason for that, in my opinion, is because of the fact that Ample is a DeFi mechanism. It's a DeFi tool. Uniswap, if you look at the market pairing, all right, at one point on Uniswap, Ample was freaking it was like twenty six million dollars on Uniswap. Insane. Absolutely insane. On KuCoin, it was the third most traded token for a while on KuCoin. All right. So, I mean, it's definitely it definitely has a community it has a lot of legs to stand on. Um, I'm personally not too concerned about what the price is doing right now. Again, for my reasons for that is I feel like what Ample is going through right now is a shakeout. I do. I feel like it's a big shakeout. I feel like a lot of the team have sold off their tokens. I feel like once they announce the DeFi news, this is going to change. Now, again, Ample is a DeFi mechanism. It's a part. It's something that's going to play a huge role. I mark my words. It's going to play a huge role in the DeFi ecosystem. When it does, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen to the price of one Ample. And the reason for that is the current market cap as an experiment, Uniswap, KuCoin, I mean, it's it's really not being applied the, the way it should be applied. Look at the Red Book. Look at the Red Book and you'll understand why this is going to be so significant for DeFi. My suspicion is that as this gets listed on a few more exchanges and as this starts to hit DeFi, a billion dollar market cap, two billion dollar market cap is not going to be it's not going to be hard i do i really feel like ample fourth is going to be one of those really high cap coins you know semi-stable coin but just given the nature of what it is in my opinion i feel like it's undervalued on purpose it just is my thoughts i'm not saying for you to go and buy it Ample is one of those coins that you don't buy and don't play with until you take the time to understand. And you have to be okay with the fact that whenever it rebases, it can rebase negatively. So, I mean, you can, over a course of three weeks, you can, you can lose, you know, 2,000 coins. But the way the model works is time equal stabilization so i mean it's a patience kind of play when it's good it's going to be really good when it's bad it's going to be really bad and it's just that's like anything else that's actually worth having in my opinion so ample fourth something i'm still for i've always supported i've always liked it i'm not saying go and buy it i'm saying that uh, take the time to understand this and research this if you want to play with it but that is it for me today guys i had to go there and say it band is going to overtake chain links price there's a few reasons out there i mean it, it, i'm sure i'm sure the hate's about to come rolling in the hate's about to come rolling in but i was right 
All right, God damn it, I was right about the. I was right about Band. Ever since I've mentioned Band, it has done nothing but good things. And it's gonna have a correction, no doubt about it. A correction is coming. It has to come. That's just the nature of trading. That's the nature of money. All right. But I still feel good about what it has done. Um, so tell me what you guys think. And yes, I still support Ample Forth. I love it. I know there's dark times for you, my fellow Amplins, okay, whatever you want to call each other. I know it's dark times right now. But uh, I, I really feel like when the when the news comes out, when the, the, the DeFi application really starts getting integrated in there, there's nothing, there's really going to be nothing to worry about with that. All right, guys, listen. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Peace out.